So what is dancing with fear? Well, first thing we have to talk about is the way in which fear manifests itself in our lives. And it's not just one way. It runs the gamut from things that we really want to things that we really don't want. So let's start with the more benign interpretation of how fear plays out in a way that you like. You meet somebody, there's tremendous attraction. There feels like there's real chemistry. And then you're gonna go meet them again. And there's anticipation. And baked into that anticipation is some fear. And interestingly enough, the fear is usually about, oh my God, what if it really is as good as I thought it was? Because if it is, it's gonna change your life. Then there's the whole category of things that we pay our hard-earned money for in order to be scared out of our wits, right? Scary movies, Steve, Stephen King novels, rock climbing, um, jumping out of airplanes, you name it. There's a lot of things that get our experience to a heightened level in which fear plays a profound part. So in my work, <clears throat> where does fear come up? Well, it comes up in nightmares, right? Nobody wants to have a nightmare. You didn't ask for a nightmare. It just shows up. Uh, it's not like all those other experiences you pay for, right? And so you wake up and your heart's pounding and what's going on? Well, I've often said to people, you know, you have a nightmare, that's your lucky day. Why is it your lucky day? <laughs> because the emotion is so profound and so powerful that it's impossible to ignore. Why would you have a nightmare though? Well, I'm gonna give you a little bit of my own experience. Uh, it's fairly recent, actually. I haven't had my, ni a nightmare in a very long time, but I did probably about three months ago. <clears throat> and that was at the point at which I decided I was going to write a book. Now, people have been telling me I should write a book. I sort of thought maybe I should write a book, but I didn't want to, okay? And then I had this chunk of time that came up, and one thing led to another. And I thought, well, okay, maybe I will do this. So I go to bed, and I have a dream where there is a demon literally standing on top of me and pushing me down and shoving my head literally almost through the mattress. So much so that I could barely breathe. It was a terrifying dream. Why have I had this dream? Well, <clears throat> if you look at my lineage, the history of my family, um, they were working class people, they were farmers, Lord knows what they were in Scotland and Wales and wherever else they came from. Um, and my dad was probably the first person in the family that actually read books. Um, as a kid, I lived in the library for a whole bunch of reasons, but I read a lot when I was a kid, and I still do. Nobody in my lineage anywhere that I'm aware of has ever written a book. That was kind of a thing that other people did. So... The idea of me doing it did not feel terrifying in the moment. I've taken on other projects before and completed them. But what lived in me was a prohibition. <clears throat> what lived in me was this is a not me activity, <clears throat> that I'm actually gonna get this done, that I'm actually gonna do it. And by the way, it's pretty much done in terms of where it needs to go next. The demon <clears throat> and that whole experience really illustrated how forbidden it was. And the other thing that's interesting about the dream is that I was paralyzed in the dream. And you probably know that when you sleep, you are paralyzed. Most of your body, I mean, you, you can't move your arms and legs when you're asleep for a good reason, because you walk around and that's the problem with sleepwalking. So there was, a, there was an aspect of lucidity in this dream. There was an aspect of really it being joined, not just in my imaginative life, but also in my cognitive life, that this, this was a very dangerous thing to be doing. And the way you get through that and understand that not only is it not dangerous, but it's essential for you to do, because there is such an emotional charge in you around it that it really propels you into the doing. So. When you have a nightmare, what you're doing is you're stepping into the fear if you work with it, right? If you ignore it, it's gonna come back. <clears throat> so best to deal with it. So now we move from the dream world into the real world or what we perceive to be the real world. And one of the things that's happening today, and it's happened at various times in, the, in, in various cultures before, but it's happening on a global basis at this point 
we are all immersed in a situation where form is breaking down all over the place. So let me take another benign, <clears throat> if you will, example. Up until maybe a decade ago or so, we thought there was somebody called Clovis Man, uh, who was really the first human in North America 11,000 years ago. Now what we've discovered, and there's still dispute about this, but there's mounting evidence, there are human beings in, in the United States 130,000 years ago. That's quite a difference. That really begins to totally shift and change what we thought about who we are, where we came from. Then we look at, pick one, the environment, the political situation, the idea that technology is eliminating jobs way faster than any outsourcing idea. Um, <clears throat> and this whole idea that the wealth of a nation is based on the growth level. Well, how long can you grow? When does this end? Because growth is a number that is not infinite. So pretty much everything that we have relied on in terms of stability, that this is the way things are, is collapsing all around us. And what we have is the same kind of choice you have in terms of whether you're gonna pay attention to your nightmares or not, okay? Whether you're gonna step into the fear or not. And also how much time you're gonna to devote to these external events that are going on all around you. One of the things that we fall back on historically, and we see evidence of it all over the place, is I'm right, you're wrong. And if you're wrong and I'm right, then I have something to hang on to. And it could be anything, it could, it could be literally anything. It could be go about global warming, it could be about whether robots are gonna take over or not, or, and we can argue about it all day long. That is the place where fear takes over and there's no dance right? You just live in the fear. And you think that because you've got this idea that I'm right, that that's going to protect you. But it's not. The alternative to that is allowing a certain amount of this information in to keep informed, to understand what's going on, and do the only thing you can really do in the face of that kind of fear which is to use it to inform the essence of who you are, how you're gonna move through the world. Now you can say to me, well, yeah, but I'm not a scientist and I can't do anything about global warming and the ice caps are melting and what are we gonna do? Well, you know, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be the best human being you know how to be because that's infectious, that's attractive. That allows people to also step into who they are and if you really peel back the fear stories, you find that there are people who are doing all kinds of stuff, just amazing things in every area that I've just talked about, right? Which doesn't get reported because it doesn't get you frightened and you won't click on the story and all that stuff. <clears throat> we have this belief system that has been backed up by supposed research that we're much more attracted to things that fright, you know, keep us frightened than we are the idea that people are being creative. Now, I personally believe that's nonsense. I think that's a story we've been told and it's another form or structure that will fall apart. But you dance with the fear to inform yourself, okay? So you dance with the fear about what's happening in the environment to understand what ideas people have about how we could change things. Similarly to the way you dance with your own dreams. You know, it's always interesting to me, particularly when people have dreams about people they know. Because the dreams are about the people they know, and they're not. And they're not from the standpoint that the dreamer, the person who is bringing the dream, has, has cast these people in their dream. You know, it's just like a movie in Hollywood, right? They pick that guy, that guy, this woman, and, and that uh, situation or location, they put them all in there and they add a story. What's really important is to understand who all those people are and then pull them out of the dream and just look at what are those energies and how are they interacting and how are they informing you about a way that you are thinking about something 
or more importantly, a way that you are feeling about something that you're probably not even aware of. I go back to the, to the demon, you know, pressing the air out of my lungs, which had to do with the prohibition around what I was setting out to do. That didn't just happen in my life, but happened all the way back from everybody in my lineage for a thousand years. That's the way we use our dreams to step into the next larger version of who we are. And that is the way that we will inform ourselves about what's going on in the world to step into the next larger version of who we are. The fear <clears throat> is a symptom, okay? The fear is not a strategy. You can't move through your life literally in fear without doing some serious damage to yourself and other people. You also can't ignore it. You have to step into it. You have to understand that at this point in the history of the world, everything, everything is changing. And the more you hang on to something, the harder it's gonna be on you. So the best thing to do is dance. Dance with the fear like you dance with every other part of you that there is, you know? The creativity, the achievement, the failures, the obsessions, they're all part of you. It's like you can't get rid of any of them. Or if you try to, you're just, as Freud would say, repressing them. They're there. Dance with them. Live with them. The fear is not going to kill you. It's going to inform you, just like any other emotion that you have. These are scary times. I get that. But dancing with the fear is the way to get through them. Take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you soon.